All right, uh, let's just get started. And um, good afternoon, everybody, um, and good morning for the people who are not here. Um, my name is Huang Chen. I work for Red Hat. Uh, if the name is too long for you to remember, I, I'm also known as RuseFS on GitHub, also as, um, Twitter. Um, I feel fortunate to represent a, a host of uh, brilliant minds to the work on Kubernetes and uh, staff integration. Um, so there's a lot of things happens in the background, a lot of interesting projects. So if you want to join one of those, Ceph Docker, Ceph Anspo, Kubernetes, and a bunch of other sideline projects, um, you're welcome to, and maybe you can talk it offline. So what happens in this talk is only five minutes. Uh, we are going to have a board, just have very quick overview of what is going on. So as you are familiar with Ceph, Ceph has a multiple uh, nice interfaces to integrate with your different use cases. So Ceph has a block storage, which are frequently used in OpenStack for single drivers, as well as uh, the file system semantics, which is becomes uh, getting, getting to production grade in Ceph 2.0, which is just released this summer. And also Ceph has a nice S3 compatible uh, objects interface, uh, uh, Ceph uh, Redux Gateway, uh, which is also getting a lot of popularity when you're using the OpenStack. You have the choice of Swift and um, Ceph Redux Gateway, so that's the case you're going to use. So what we are using uh, primarily on Kubernetes is the, um, the Ceph RBD, the Redux block device. Um, recently, we also support uh, CephFS. Um, so the voice from the um, community as well as from the end user for Ceph is it's great technology, but it's really hard to use. Deploy Ceph is a nice mail. Without a week, we probably cannot get it ready to product him. So good news is that with a bunch of um, uh, hard work from the community and uh, from people from different country, uh, companies, Red Hat, Marantas, and among some people I don't know, uh, we created a lot of uh, technologies to facilitate the deployments uh, Ceph cluster deployments. So one way, if you are a Kubernetes um, end user, you can deploy Ceph using a daemon set. Um, if you are going to the Ceph Docker GitHub, um, there's uh, some people created a, a repository. So you can uh, use a bunch of scripts and uh, images, uh, Ceph daemon images, uh, to create the daemon set. The daemon set essentially runs a single daemon, um, daemon image, uh, Ceph Ceph daemon image. The image will start Ceph monitor, Ceph OSDs, and as well as uh, the NFS daemons. So they are all bundled into a single uh, image. And through the deployments, uh, daemon size deployments, you can create a Ceph cluster instantaneously. Uh, we also support Ceph deployments through the Ansible, uh, which is more. Uh, out of uh, Kubernetes environments, you can create a cluster uh, using Ceph Ansible, which supports bare metal deployments as well as a containerized Ceph using a bunch of uh, different images. We support both the upstream Ceph daemon uh, images as well as that has supported images uh, as Ceph. And once you deploy Ceph, um, when you create pod and create uh, deployments, you can consume Ceph very easily, uh, thanks to the recent great progress on the cross storage class and dynamic provisioning. So you don't really need to know the details of your Ceph cluster each time you create a pod and create a volume. All you need to do is to create the uh, top level storage class. And within the storage class, you just embed the necessary information. So the next time when you create a claim, you can just remember to pick back your class name, and then you will get the self rbd image right away. Um, to get a quick sense of how, all right, sorry for the bad presentation, uh, but the idea is that um, this is a storage class definition. So what's the information you need to put inside into the, um, the storage class is relatively minimal. So you need to have the, uh, the IDs you want to use, the monitors um, that you already created in the Ceph cluster, and a bunch of other things like namespace is pretty much standards and the secrets. Uh, one thing I have to keep in mind that it only creates the KRBD, so to use Ceph on Kubernetes, that's the only way you can use right now. And it only supports Ceph RBD image one, which means you cannot do the flattening 
and fancy features like that. And uh, I think there's work in progress from some other communities, uh, from the community and uh, developers that's trying to bring the CFMBD. And uh, we also have projects called a QC, a QEMU, TCMU. Uh, could be the partition bridging technology to present RBD as a local block device. So we think that's our bridging technologies you can use in the latest features in libRBD, like the flattening and um, snapshots recovery and things like that. All right, that's just conclude my five minutes talk. I'm handing over to Mr. White.